Uh, so, hello guys. Um, my talk is going to be about data science with OpenStreetMap, so I'll continue the things Jakob told you and give you some other flavors to it. Um, so first, uh, as Jacob said, there are different amenities, that uh, different tags that you can use. Um, for example, one tag that is common is the amenity tag. So in OpenStreetMap, as you said, uh, as you saw before, you have uh, key value pairs, and for each key, you can have some uh, value. And one very common uh, key is the amenity key. And as you can see, there are a lot of things like beer garden, cafe, barbecue, bar, uh, parking spot, whatever. And you can explore these tags in a site called Tag Info. Um, there you have like a statistic of the whole OpenStreetMap data. Um, how many buildings are there? How many highways are there? Um, how many walls are no? Um, and yes. So how do you load this data? You can use uh, tag info as an API. Um, you can download, uh, for example, in our case, the, the key, uh, the amenity key. And you uh, can download this with the API. And you can see like the most, uh, most used amenity key is parking, then place of worship, school, bench, and so on. And if we visualize uh, these tags, we can see like most amenities are parking spots. Um, then you have like place of worship, school, bench, restaurant, and then it drops off. And as Jacob said, apparently I'm a guru in, o in Overpass API. So I'm going to show you how to uh, download Overpass. Um, you have an API which you can access with their own query language. Um, of course, you can do that also with Python. And um, this is a fairly simple example where we, um, we want a query, which is, um, this is the code plug you saw before in the, uh, in the Overpass Turbo, uh, which was before, uh, the, the GUI interface. And you can see here we want the JSON output. Um, we want uh, inside Austria. Uh, this is admin level is, is a definition of a boundary. And then you use this for uh, searching all amenities restaurants. So we can see, oh, and then we want to count all of them. And you can see, uh, where is it? Uh, so we have uh, 11,910 restaurants in Austria in OpenStreetMap. And with this data, um, so f first, with tag info, we know what uh, kind of tags we want. With uh, Open's Overpass API, we know how to download the data. And now we want to store the data. So for this, I'm going to use PostGIS. Um, PostGIS is a special uh, database uh, extension for Postgres SQL. Um, it offers various uh, spatial types, uh, like geometry and geography. Um, you have various spatial indexes, like R-tree, KD-tree, and Quad-tree for faster search. And also you have uh, special functions. No? <laughs> 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 yeah, this is like the most interesting part about um, Postgres, uh, Postgres, that you have various different functions which you can apply in your search. So you can uh, do like a SQL query like you would always do. And you would add something like, OK, I want the length of this line, or I want the area of this area, or you want the x value of this point. And you can do much more complicated things like uh, you want a point inside an area, or you want an intersection of areas. And uh, you can even do things like Voronoi and uh, Delaunay and everything. So creating a table in Postgres is like you would you do in um, normal uh, SQL. The only difference is that you have this new type, as we saw before, the geography type. Um, and you can insert it in, in the same way, but in this case, you would use the, the, some of the special functions which we had. And these would take something like the well-known text format. And now that we have the data somewhere stored, 
how do we process this data? So there's a, a neat library called GeoPandas, which is basically just uh, uh, pandas with another column for geometry. And it, you can use everything that you can use in pandas. You can use this uh, there as well. And it uses uh, um, Shapely for the geometric operations. Um, it uses Fiona for the file access and for visualization it needs uh, this Descartes and Matplotlib. This is only important if you install it on Windows because most of these things don't work properly there. So you would <laughs> need to install each of them uh, by, by, by hand. Um, okay, uh, yes, yeah, so how do we load this? Uh, load this? You have again the same thing for Python. Uh, you have a great library called PsyCop G2, um, and you can uh, connect to there, and you can get the connection, and then you can simply use this function from PostGIS to load all the the data. And in this case, we have a data set of all uh, amenities in Austria uh, with their uh, amenity tag, with their state, and their geometry, and some other uh, meta, uh, some other attributes. And we can take this data and uh, visualize them. So this would be all the <coughs> amenities in Austria. You can see the Alps uh, somewhere here. And like most of it is, is collected in, in the north. Yeah, and you have also you have very easy functions for, uh, for projections. So in, in when you want to project from the lat long projection to some special uh, projection for Austria only. So in this case, we would have a projection which is in met, uh, meters. And you can see the, 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 the scale is in meters there as well. So what are the most common amenities in Salzburg? Um, first, we have to transform our data. So you saw the... Uh, the data before, so we have just uh, each tag and each state, and so we want to have uh, for each state the tag. So we we group we do a group by as we would do in SQL, and then we count. Uh, reset index is just to um, to make it uh, work, and uh, then you do a pivot and you transform it in such a way that you have the keys and amenities as columns and rows. Uh, as columns and indices. And uh, when we visualize it, the most common um, amenity is bench. Uh, if you remember before, uh, the most common amenity in the world is parking, and apparently in Salzburg there's not enough of it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, um, so when you we have all our data we we know how to work with it what what can we do with it so let's let's ask some interesting questions like um what is the most french city okay so we want to use uh, simple data science techniques to determine whether a city is french so how would we do that so first we i uh, prepare the data set for all amenities in france in uh, Austria, Swiss, and in Germany. And I'm going to use uh, Germany and France to determine which one is more France. So I took like the opposite of France to be Germany. Uh, yeah. And I use this as a, as a classifier, which we're going to use later on to determine whether a city is French or not. Okay. Yes, so first we're gonna um, take all only Germany and France. And then we need uh, feature vectors for all the amenities. So we have the counts of each amenity in each city. And then we want uh, uh, the label to be zero for Germany and one for France. This is like our target vector and our feature vectors. And now we, um, we separate our data into testing and training. So we can uh, see if our model is uh, working on other data as well. And to um, the model we're going to use is going to be log logistic regression, which is commonly used for classification, but it's 
it's basically a regression between two classes. So if you have, in our case, France and Germany, this would give us a, a, a continuous value between these classes. So if we give him a feature, like let's say the feature from, uh, feature from Salzburg, we give him the feature vector from Salzburg, and then he, he can calculate a probability that it's French or German. And this is going to be useful for later. Um, this is fairly simple, like you can use scikit-learn, uh, again, from, with Python. And uh, you train a model, and then we have some, uh, we, we see our scores. So for training, we have almost 90% accuracy. For testing, it's 82. That's, it's not good, but it should be enough for our case. And let's see, what's the most French-Austrian city, okay? Uh, any, any guesses so far? It's true, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not the most, but it's, it's one of the most, yeah. Okay. There are not many cities, but... <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll, I'll show you. No. <laughs> uh, Salzburg is actually the least French city. <laughs> Uh, so the most French city is uh, Linz. Uh, I will get to it why this might be the case. Um, and yeah, Vienna is apparently somehow French. Um, might be the accent there. Uh, okay, let, let's do a visualization of the um, map of the most French city. So we have our data set from Swiss... Swiss um, cities from French cities, Austrian cities, and German cities, and we want to use that data uh, to, to um, so we want to use that data to visualize how French they are. So we're going to use our Frenchness score. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to use the logistic regression we trained before. So we have our classifier, and there we have this function called predict probability. And there you can uh, say, okay, how much is the probability that it's class A or how much is the probability that it's class B? For so class B is uh, French, so we take uh, one for French. And we calculate this for each uh, feature vector in our whole data set. Uh, then we have to normalize the Frenchness. <laughs> And then we're going to use a very, very great library called Folium. I actually uh, learned it today. <laughs> so so uh, it didn't work uh, immediately, but it worked. Um, it's using Leaflet.js, so it's um, basically a web visualization framework. Ah, web visualization library, and it's, um, it's very easy to set up. So you just have the, um, to import it, and then you have a map, and you can already display it. Um, what's the only thing which is now different is that we're going to use a, a color map from Matplotlib, uh, which we're going to convert to a hex, um, hex format in color. And this one, gonna, we're going to use this as a circle marker for each uh, point. And uh, we're going to have a name for each city when we click on it. And then we have the uh, fill color, which we have from the map. And this is our map. Uh, so the blue, more uh, dark blue, is uh, the blue is uh, German, and the purple is French. And uh, you can see here, uh, Linz is like the most French of all cities, even more French than the French. <laughs> 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 um, yeah. <laughs> so the reason why I think it might be is that uh, when I was looking at Linz, uh, Linz has the uh, highest density of all cities in parking spots. So um, as uh, Jakob said before, uh, OpenStreetMap is uh, by public u uh, done by public users. So if some user is like very ambitious and he wants to dedicate all his time to mark every single parking spot in Linz, uh, which they did, like they had squares for each parking spot in Linz, and you, you might have these outliers, and that's my, my, my suspicion that it's what's the reason for having this high 
Frenchness here. <laughs> yeah, and you can see, um, okay. you can interactively take a look at it and you can like look, uh, have pop-ups and everything. And yes. So this was if the visualization doesn't work. <laughs> and yes, this was it. <laughs>